I personally don't really care about Fortnite these days. but something important needs to be addressed that I do care about. I can't go more than one day on the internet without somebody talking about how Fortnite runs terribly on AMD graphics cards. So today we're finally gonna get to the bottom of this and figure it out. There's so many videos on the internet that are titled like fixes for running Fortnite on AMD and none of them are from really PC enthusiast level of people. Honestly, most of them are from 12 year olds. I feel an obligation to put our slightly more advanced minds and experience on this case and hopefully people can refer to this video over the next several years every time someone talks smack about AMD. Now we're gonna have all sorts of nerdy data and analytics in this video, but the point of this video is to make it as digestible and easy to understand as possible. And I'm even gonna show you the best settings to run for Fortnite, whether you have an AMD or an Nvidia graphics card after a quick word from today's sponsor. Fantech and specifically their new E1 NEX workstation screwdriver kit, which is honestly perfect for us PC builders. I mean, this isn't just a screwdriver, it's essentially a mini workbench as you have all sorts of tools and accessories and it's stuff that you actually need for everyday tech repair and especially building computers. I love this little magnetic tray here for storing the tiny little screws. The pry tools are perfect for opening stuff up and these tweezers certainly come in handy all the time. It even comes with an anti-static strap which isn't something I've ever used in my lifetime but I know some of you refuse to even look at PC components without using one. Now the screwdriver itself is something that I'll certainly use as it has two different torque speeds and even a flashlight that automatically lights up when you're deep in that motherboard installation and you can't see what you're doing. Fantech is actually giving you all a beefy discount if you use this discount code and the link down in the description. So go check that out if you wanna take your PC building to the next level. All right, so we have three different price tiers of both AMD and Nvidia GPUs to cover whether you're on a budget PC, mid-ranged or high-end. The only thing we're not covering specifically are the potato PCs, but I do have some information about running on those as well. And honestly, if you don't wanna sit through all of this testing information and data analysis, just skip to this time frame in the video where I outline all of the major points that you need to know about running Fortnite effectively for both Nvidia and AMD GPUs. So for the budget cards, we have an AMD RX 5700 non-XT versus the GTX 1660 Super. Both cards are around the $100 to $120 price range on the used market. For the mid-range cards, we have an RX 7600 versus an RTX 3060, and both of those can be found for around $250 brand new. And for the higher-end cards, we have the fan favorite RX 7900 GPUs. GRE versus the RTX 4070, and both of those are between 500 to 550 bucks. And just so you know, this video is not gonna be all about just price to performance and raw FPS per dollar kind of value video. We're gonna go way deeper than that. We're also gonna be testing all of these cards with our new testing rig, which is inside the Antec C5 ARGB case, but more on the testing rig later in the video. Just know that we have a Ryzen 5 7600 and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 at 6,000 megahertz, so it's a very capable system for this type of testing in 1080p. So I'm first gonna give you our Notion screenshot so you have all the data in front of you right away. This has some really juicy information in here, but none of this is really relevant unless if we explain and parse what this data is actually telling us. For these FPS columns per GPU, this first number is the average FPS, the second number is the 1% low, and the third number is the 0.1% low. This is very important because in today's video, the average FPS number is like the least important factor. These 1% and 0.1% lows are where we found the problems that people are talking about. I'd highly recommend watching an explanation video of what 1% and 0.1% lows actually mean, especially if you're just a dedicated PC gamer. But basically, these paint a picture as to how bad the FPS drops or dips get. You may have a perfectly fine average FPS, but when you get into a gunfight, especially with a lot of skyscraper building, that FPS could tank and cause all sorts of stuttering and possibly cause you to die to somebody that had no business killing you. That's the 1% and 0.1% low. And just as a disclaimer, just so you guys know, Fortnite is an incredibly tough game to consistently benchmark over and over again with different GPUs. In a 100 person battle royale type of game, anything can happen. Our testing route consists of landing around restored reels and then making our way over to reckless railways. We did our best to run multiple tests with every GPU and every type of setting, but some variance is out of our control and that's why our RTX 3060 actually tested slightly better than our 4070 at one point, but that's also potentially because of some CPU bottlenecking going on there at the 400 plus FPS range 
strange, but that's not really important for this discussion. And the Fortnite seasons and chapters actually matter as well because some map layouts can be more demanding than others. So let's dive into the settings page first and we can knock out some of these recap points real quickly. First up for the DirectX versions, we found that DirectX 11 will almost always run worse than DirectX 12. So after some confirmation, we removed that from our future testing runs. The two main options that you need to consider are performance mode and DirectX 12. Now, despite popular belief, performance mode is actually worse for you, provided that you use dialed in DirectX 12 settings. The best settings to use, in my opinion, are what a lot of people call pro settings. And this is putting DirectX to 12, resolution scale to 100%, view distance to far, and then turn everything else to off or whatever the lowest setting is. Sure, Fortnite isn't gonna look amazing with RTX level shadows and reflections, but Fortnite can be a competitive game. So our FPS consistency is what's the most important. Over the last like five years, you'll see in every single one of our PC building videos that we always set the setting to pro and go figure that's why we've never come to the conclusion that Fortnite runs bad on any GPU, let alone AMD ones. Now, the next setting to know, which is arguably even more important is capping your FPS. We'll first look at these RX 5700 benchmarks and with DirectX 12 Pro settings without an FPS cap, sure, this 295 average FPS looks great, but look at that 0.1% low. 37 is really, really low. And this is what causes those gunfights to go south because your FPS is gonna tank quickly and you're gonna miss your shot. To combat this, if you set an FPS cap to 240, which you probably don't even have higher than a 240 hertz monitor, that's going to significantly boost up this 0.1% low up to 101. Dropping down to 101 FPS is way better than dropping all the way down to 37, which again is why setting an FPS cap is probably my number one tip. Honestly, FPS capping is one of the most underrated features in PC gaming, and I feel like it's something that us enthusiasts dial in for a lot of games, but it's not something that the casual Fortnite gamer crowd would think to do. Sure, your FPS average number is gonna drop, but what's more important than that is you're gonna raise your 1% and 0.1% lows, and in a competitive game, that is way more important. For a competitive eSport game, I always recommend setting an FPS cap to a little bit lower than whatever your potential average FPS is because that will leave processing power on your GPU to raise those 1% and 0.1% lows. If your GPU is only capable of averaging like 110 FPS, I'd set that FPS cap to like 90 so then your GPU isn't at 100% the entire time. So whenever those intense 1v1 huge building battles happen, your GPU will have some processing power left over to make sure that FPS doesn't drop significantly and cause you to lose the fight. If you're casually strolling around with an uncapped frame rate, that means your GPU is probably pegged to 80, 90, or 100% the entire time. So there's no processing power left over for those way more demanding and intense gun battles. Here's the RX 7600 benchmarks. And again, our 0.1% low was at 70 with an uncapped frame rate. But when we capped the FPS at 240, the 0.1% low shot up to 100. Now, what's interesting though, is whenever you cap your FPS using performance mode, that doesn't really affect it nearly as much as DirectX 12. Of pro settings. For whatever reason, capping the FPS in performance mode only gave us a small boost in the lows, which is another reason why I wouldn't really recommend performance mode. Unless you're on an absolute potato gaming PC, I would recommend running in DirectX Pro settings with an FPS cap, no matter how good your GPU is. Which brings me to my next point. Fortnite is actually a lot more demanding of a game than people realize. Now sure, it's not demanding in a sense like Starfield or Cyberpunk where the graphics are insane, but rather it's its own version of being GPU demanding. Running around the map, especially in a low population area, can be done on a potato, but when you find yourself in a big gun battle in one of those big cities on the map when someone's building a skyscraper, that is incredibly taxing on your system. What I see a lot of people do are dial in those settings to like the high preset or even the ultra preset, and you can run around the map by yourself perfectly fine with a good FPS, but whenever you get into those intense gun battles, your FPS is gonna tank. Even high-end cards like the 7900 GRE and 4070 will struggle if you're you're using higher ultra settings. So again, even with these types of cards, I recommend running with the pro settings. Another issue that we ran into and only with the Nvidia cards is that first game that you play after installing or updating your GPU drivers, it's gonna suck. Here's some footage of our RTX 4070 on the first game after installing drivers and we were getting FPS drops all over the place. It was honestly a stuttering mess. The FPS average still remains pretty solid at 331, but our 1% and 0.1% lows were in this single digits, which is absolutely atrocious. Whenever this happens, all you have to do is restart the game. And from there, the numbers go back to normal. After that one restart, our FPS average was about the same, but then we got a solid 106 and 
141 for the lows and the game is no longer choppy. Now, I'm definitely not smart enough to know why exactly that happens. But well, we can't all be Einstein. But what's interesting is that happened for every single Nvidia graphics card on the first game after touching the GPU drivers. And this doesn't happen to AMD GPUs at all. And speaking of Nvidia versus AMD, let's talk about that price to performance real quickly, but most PC builders are already gonna know this conclusion. For the RX 5700 versus the 1660 Super, again, both sub $120 GPUs, using DirectX 12 Pro settings, we got a much better average FPS and 1% low with the 5700 versus the 1660 Super. For the RX 7600 versus the 3060, again, both $250-ish dollar graphics cards, with those same settings, the 3060 actually got a single digit boost in average FPS, but look at these lows. Even without an FPS cap, the 7600 got a 169 and 70, 1% and 0.1% low, while the 3060 got 147 and 42. You would absolutely notice that 0.1% low difference, especially in a gunfight. So I would take the RX 7600 in that situation all day. And here with our high-end cards, the RX 7900 GRE beats the 4070 with DirectX 12 Pro settings with all of these FPS numbers. And honestly, it's not even really close. This card is a beast in terms of raw FPS per dollar and it shows here. Okay, so if you ended up skipping to this part of the video, here are the five main conclusions that we came to for our Fortnite testing. Number one is that Fortnite is its own version of demanding when it comes to GPU processing power. It's not demanding because the graphics are crazy realistic. It's demanding because in huge gunfights with skyscraper type building from those sweaty 12 year olds, and especially in one of the cities on the map, this requires a ton of strain on your GPU to maintain your average FPS. Even with high-end graphics cards, those types of moments are really, really demanding. So tune your expectations appropriately. Number two is that unless if you're on an absolute potato PC, I'm a potato. I'd recommend running with DirectX 12 Pro settings instead of performance mode. Put the resolution scale at 100%, view distance too far, and turn off everything or set it to the lowest setting. The game still looks good here. You can see your enemies from far away, but you're not wasting GPU processing power on the textures, clouds, shadows, or anything else that's not important for competitive gaming. Number three is to cap your FPS to whatever is a bit lower than your average FPS. For example, if your PC can output about an average of 110 FPS, cap that FPS to 90, that way you're saving GPU processing power for those intense gunfights. This will ensure that your GPU doesn't dip super low and cause a bad frame drop when you need it the most. Number four is that if you're running an Nvidia graphic card and you just installed or updated your GPU drivers, open up Fortnite and then restart it before jumping back into a game. For whatever reason, Nvidia just runs really poorly whenever you're playing that first game after touching your GPU drivers, whether you're installing or updating them. So just restart Fortnite once before you actually play a game. And finally, number five is that objectively, Fortnite actually runs better on AMD graphics cards versus similarly priced Nvidia cards. Both the average FPS and those lower FPS dips are better on AMD cards as is the same for most GPU testing these days. Now, for whatever it's worth, I honestly think that the reason why this AMD misinformation is spreading is simply just a numbers game. We all know that Nvidia has a huge 85% GPU market share and it dominates the Steam hardware survey charts and most people simply just aren't buying AMD GPUs. And that 10 to 12% of market share that AMD does have is mostly us PC enthusiasts, not the super casual audience that just wants to play Fortnite. This means that the people who are saying AMD sucks with Fortnite, or even the people that try to provide fixes for Fortnite on AMD, they probably just don't know what they're talking about. Everything I said today, such as dialing in the graphics settings, capping your FPS, and AMD being better FPS per dollar isn't groundbreaking news or news at all to us PC enthusiasts, but for the casual gamers, they simply don't know this basic level of information. Now, I don't think people are maliciously spreading misinformation about AMD, at least most of the time, but I just think that it's a numbers game, and for those type of people that are casual, Fortnite, but AMD GPU owners, I just don't think that they have a foundation level to being a PC enthusiast and PC gaming in general. So if you are out in the wild or do hear anyone talking trash about AMD running on Fortnite, it's time to stop. I would kindly recommend sharing this video and specifically just share them to the exact time frame of when I recap those five points. On YouTube, you can actually hit that share button and choose to build the URL link starting at a specific timestamp. So go ahead and do it to this timestamp. That way they can see this information right away. Chances are that most people don't need to actually sit through all of the GPU information and testing, parsing, and explanations. But I do think that those five points are extremely important to know, even for the most casual of gamers. And speaking of that testing information, I did want to loop back real quickly to our testing rig because this 
case is definitely worth some attention. Shout out to Antec for sending out this C5 ARGB because this thing is a beast. It actually comes with seven total pre-installed ARGB fans and I love the attention to detail here. At first I was questioning why they put these bottom and side fans as exhaust, but these are actually reverse bladed fans. So both the side and bottom fans are actually intaking, which is exactly what you need. When you combine these with the rear exhaust fan that's included and some exhaust fans up here at the top for our AIO, we have a perfect airflow setup here. I also love the footprint of this case because it's not too big and it's not too small. You have all the room for pretty much any component or cooling solution that you need, but it's not gonna take up a huge amount of room on your desk. It also has support for back connect motherboards for a cableless design, an integrated ARGB and PWM fan controller, and I'll have a link to this along with everything else inside our testing rig down in the description. Here's a full look at the parts list, so shout out to G-Skill, Crucial, and Enermax for sending out some of these additional parts for us to use. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section what you thought of this sort of more in-depth type of testing video, and if you don't really like it and you just want me to go back to PC building videos, then feel free to click the one that's on the screen now.